Okay, so welcome to another episode of Paul's Asian Adventure. We are here at the Kuala Lumpur Airport, about to leave Kuala Lumpur. Well, actually, we have about three hours left before the plane leaves. Uh, two and a half hours. Yeah. So we just got a coffee. And even thought, though it's um... <laughs> even though it's like eleven twenty at night, uh, but we're gonna watch some movies. We downloaded on the iPad and try to make the best of our flight. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we thought we'd talk a bit about our experience in Kuala Lumpur and what we think of uh, Malaysia in general and Kuala Lumpur especially. Yeah. So I can cut it short by saying, I don't We're have to say, you here. don't have to say wait to the end <laughs> for the surprise, but we love it here. We're I gonna mean, move here. Uh, we are, <laughs> We have plans to probably move here in January, but our plans are fluctuating so much because of so much going on in our lives. But that's kind of what we're thinking um, to to maybe maybe move here in January for like three months, maybe. just just to get a feel for it. Because now we're here for three weeks, and we liked it. Uh, we saw Georgetown. We saw a lot of Kuala Lumpur. And we've been told that somewhere called Malacca, is that right? Malacca, yeah. Malacca, south of KL. It's very nice also. So we plan to check that out. Of course, we want to check Vietnam out and Thailand, Thailand. but I can't really imagine Loving. it being it better than Malaysia for us and the stuff we value, right? So we value like a conservative society. We value variety I mean, of foods, which they have it, here because of all the different cultures. We value nature, which they have here in plenty. They have the parks, the botanical gardens, and it's just amazing. Um, yeah, well, I, I gotta say something about when you said something conservative. There are certain areas in Malaysia where people wear whatever they want to wear. Right? Oh yeah, it's a mix. It's a mix. Yeah. So everybody just mind their own business. Yeah, it's you true. know, the, you don't say something like, like you don't say something like, "Oh my gosh, she's wearing that. How could she?" You know what I mean? They just mind their own business. That's the thing. Well, I say that sometimes. <laughs> 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 to ourselves, <laughs> but yeah, um, Malaysia. That's the thing we love about here. You know, there's a variety of everything. Mm. Maybe. Um, it's Culture, amazing. people. I, yeah. So I've been all over the world, many countries. I lived in the Middle East. I've lived. I lived in Egypt. I lived in Europe, in the U.S. And I've never been to a country like Malaysia. Malaysia is really special. Just the variety of food, the variety of cultures. When you go to the supermarket, I have a video, and I put a link to it. When we went to the supermarket, you know, it took me. 10, 15 minutes to walk through there pretty quick, as you can tell. But just amazing amount of food you can get here, the variety of food and how cheap the food is. Like, mm. for example, we're looking at a kilo of chicken here. It went from 100 pesos or almost $2 to 5 $6 a kilo, depending on the brand of chicken, right? Yeah. And the apples are cheap. I mean, th just the cost of food when you go to the supermarket here is very low, you know, so now, there are things that are a bit more expensive. For example, when you go out to the mall and have a coffee, it costs a bit more here by maybe, I'd say 10, 20%. Yeah. Um, um, but then again, the rent is cheaper here from when you look at a one or two bedroom, a bit outside KL Central, and you look at the quality of it compared to, for example, a place like Dumaguete or BGC, or even Cebu City for that matter, it's cheaper here, you know? And of course, the transportation, all the trains to grab, it's hardly mm. any traffic. I mean, there's traffic, but nothing like, for example, where we, where we live in Bakong, Dumaguete, Valencia area. Yeah. You know, and certain times where it's so trafficated that it's, it's barely moving. Yeah. So if you have a car, you're stuck. Yeah. Um, and that's in Dumaguete. We're not talking about KL. Um, and even Georgetown, we went. We didn't like Georgetown as much as we did KL, but I could see myself living there. Yeah, it's, I mean, the only it's thing a, there is the lack of 
they don't have the trains, they don't have the e-scooters, the they don't have any of that stuff, but it's still very nice. It, it's, still... It, it's very nice, but the thing is, it's not very well put in a way, to the point that it's like, it's scattered. It's very scattered. It's very scattered. That... I compare it to like for people that live in the, in the South Midwest area, if you've been to Oklahoma City and you've been to Dallas, how much more compact Dallas is than Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is so spread out with like some, and same with Houston, with a lot of different towns, and it's all called Houston kind of thing, you know? Mm. That's kind of what Georgetown reminded me of. Not in the as big aspect as Oklahoma City or, or Houston, but kind of a bit like that. While well, Chaos Central is, everything is more down to the central area. Now you do have towns, other places, yeah. but, but it's, it's so well put together. Yeah. That's what I like about KL. It's just so well put together. Even the airport is so nice. I and mean, like one thing I could comment here about the people here, you know, we talk about how in the Philippines people, people are so friendly, social in a way. Here, they, the locals, they can be very accommodating. Like when we went to the clinic because Paul had to do his yearly checkup. He didn't have to, but I he, wanted to. He wanted to, because he's getting old. <laughs> um, Just something I do to yeah. keep up with my blood work to make sure nothing's changing. And if there are changes, I can be aware of it and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, but anyways, he asked, you know, the doctors there and the people working there, they, they did not seem like they are like stuck up in a way. You know, they, they're very like accommodating. Say, accom accommodating in so many ways. Like, yeah, there's a park there that you can go. It's like, yeah. And what surprised me is how like I went in for a blood test. I thought it was just lab work. But actually, after the lab work, they said I should go see their doctor there. And I thought, of course, I'd be paying extra for that. But that wasn't any extra. That was included into the lab work. Mm -hmm. So they weren't like nickel and diving me, it seemed like. And that doctor was so good. I mean, she was, she knew her stuff. I mean, I was so surprised. Like, I've talked to the doctors in the US and Saudi, and I'll, I'll do a lot of research myself, and I'll bring up stuff, stuff sometimes, and I'll see a question mark in there. Like, <laughs> like, okay, this guy's done too much research on us, you know. But, but with her, I mean, she was so knowledgeable. She knew exactly. And what I liked about her, I have a bit of higher cholesterol, not really high, but a bit of, a, a, in the US would be above 200, a bit above 200. And every time I go to the doctor, not every time, 90% of the time I go to a doctor in the US, the first thing they want to do is put me on statins. She told me, well, you should keep testing your blood, change your diet, exercise, the typical stuff. And she told me what vitamins I need to take to help lower uh, and help me. And then we talked about some other stuff that might help. And she said, then in three months, come back. And if it hasn't gone down, then maybe you should take a statin. But uh, wait to take that. So she didn't even want to put me on a statin unless I had to go, which yeah. I really like the doctors like that. Because sometimes when I'm, not sometimes, most of the times when I'm in the U.S., I go to a doctor, I feel like they're trying to sell me for drugs, you know, they're drug pushers. Sorry, you can beep that out. They're like, almost like, uh, of course, I'm not saying all doctors are like that, but quite a few I've been to have been that way. And it's very uh, kind of like, are they looking out for my best interest or are they looking out for somebody else's best interest? The question is. So anyway, that's, that's, that's a different video. I just wanted to bring that up. But the, the question healthcare. is, are they, like, the healthcare in Malaysia, are they, like, kind of, we're kind of, like, a comparing type of deal right now, right yeah. now. Because in the Philippines, I, for example, right, okay. um, when we go to a hospital or anything like that, there, are they very, like, do, do you have to wait much longer for them to accommodate you? First of all, if you go to a doctor in the Philippines, okay, number one, you don't have an appointment. You just sit there until it's your turn. That's one. So you're wasting half a day or a whole day or whatever. There's no, there doesn't seem to be, how shall I call this? Uh, Efficient? Efficiency is a word, but no one seems to care about your time. You know, time is not a, 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 a quantifiable thing for them that they, care about you know it's your time like that time we went to the doctor for you and you had the first appointment at 8 and the doctor showed up at 10 and he didn't even apologize it's like normal you know yeah. it's like okay I just wasted two hours I mean for him it's nothing but for me it's two hours of my life that's gone that I could be doing something you know mm. 
don't need to be sleepy to extra hours, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but the quality of the doctors in the Philippines is also nowhere near the quality of the doctors here. I just never had that interaction in the Philippines talking to a doctor the way I've had here. Really? You know, no. Really. I just haven't. Just, I just felt like there was just a, a, a different level of healthcare here. Now, we did go to private here, and we go to private in the Philippines too. Yeah. But I'm not saying the Filipino doctors are bad, but I just, the, the, the level here is a notch higher, a notch higher. You know? The competency uh, level is higher. The competency. Comp okay, you got me saying it wrong now. Competency? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but they they are very knowledgeable here, and I I, I mean the healthcare. That's another thing I, I was thinking about when moving somewhere. Of course, is the healthcare because you know I'm not a 20 year old anymore, and being able to eat healthy, variety of different foods, and for example, when we were in KL, I mean I think the day we had the least steps was probably 12,000 steps a day because we were walking so much because it's a walking city, right? Yeah. I mean, we go outside, we want to walk to a coffee shop. You walk to a coffee shop because you have all the sidewalks, you have the e-scooters you can take if you want to, but we never took them. I mean, we took them once for fun, but usually we just walk, right? Yeah. Even so, if I mean, it's, uh, it's 50 it, minutes I mean, walking. Here yeah. I've actually lost weight. I probably lost one or two kilos, okay? And I've been eating healthy, but not not like large quantities so i mean it, it's to me malaysia has everything so but people are, are raving about vietnam too and how healthy the food is there and everything so we'll go Maybe try we'll go try out, yeah. yeah we'll go try vietnam now the big advantage of course here is that they speak english same like the philippines yeah you know now the taxi driver did tell us something very interesting when we were taking a, ta a grab once and he said you know, the, the Malay people, they all know English. They can all speak English, but some of the workers that come from India, Indonesia, and other places, they don't know English. So sometimes, I guess when we meet people that who can't speak comment, English. Darling. That was a comment? <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, I'm mixing things up. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was a comment. That's right. One of the commenters said that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, it's quite true because, like, sometimes how we, we thought that they're locals, you know, and when we talk to them, they like, uh, they talk, they speak to us in their native native language, language not, not and Malay. it's yeah. like we have to guess. Oh, okay, there. Like, yeah. like you know, but yeah. they're still accommodating in so many ways. It's good for Google Translate. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that was basically anything else you'd like to say or that you'd like to add? Uh, not not much really. I mean, this is my second time here in Malaysia, and we'll be hoping for a third time. <laughs> I'll be just, hoping for sure there'll be a third I, I, I love, we love Malaysia and, you know, I, I mean, I didn't expect him to love Malaysia, like this kind of... Why wouldn't you expect it to No, love because you... The variety of food... You no, know, because the, the thing is, um, if I say something like, babe, it's really nice there, blah, 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 you know, you, you are, you're very skeptical because, you know, you might say, like, I love it just because, you know, food and everything, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's, it's uh, not just the food. If it was just the food, I would say, yeah, it's a nice place. But and this has been a gastronomical it. vacation. I mean, we've eaten so much good food, it's crazy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we've been eating. And that's another thing that the doctor did say. There were some markers in my blood that indicated some, not I wouldn't say bad stuff, but on the level he to ate be bad. a lot of saturated food. But, but I said to the doctor, we're on vacation, so, you know. Things might be a bit elevated because we're eating out every day. I don't eat a lot of saturated food, but it's still when you eat out, they cook it in a certain way versus yeah, yeah. cooking at home and all that. And at home, you typically eat more, at least I do, I eat more nuts and I eat more bread and I eat more things with fiber, you know, high fiber content and all that. So, but that's besides the point. We're getting off track here. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, just everything about Malaysia, there's not one thing I can think of and we've only been here for three weeks. I'm sure if we lived here for two years, it'd be something we'd find we didn't like. But so yeah. far, there's not one thing I've found that I don't like here. You know, I really haven't. And then they have a three-month uh, visa, so we can come here for three months. I'm not sure if we can extend it or not, but we can find out about that. Yeah. And they also have the MMM2H visa. 
you have different types of visa. They have investment visa and all kinds of different visas. So you can come and live here. And really, it's pretty inexpensive. Like, once you once you move here, it's, of course, we're on vacation. So things are more expensive. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're eating out all the time and all that. Once you move here and you start cooking at home and only eating out maybe once or twice a week, having coffee outside only three times a week instead of, you know, ten times a week. I mean, sometimes you have coffee twice, right? In the twice day, a day. Or <laughs> sometimes more, you know? So it's like things, of course, have gotten expensive when you go on vacation compared to when you live in a place. The same in the Philippines, right? So, mm. so yeah, we're, but however, we're both looking forward to going back, back to, to the Philippines. Philippines. You know, I guess it's just. We have just, our own house there. We have our Call house, we have our things, we have, yeah. you know, it's just. We have, um, we adopted, kind of adopted two dogs that yeah. are guarding our house right now. And we kind of miss their. You know, yeah. interaction with. I her. miss my uh, ADD 160. Yeah, so it's like, um, so to those people who are saying, why don't you just move out there? Because we talk about, you know, the negative things about the Philippines mm. and stuff. You know, if you cannot accept the negative. Um, Nowhere is all positive. Yeah, every everywhere and wherever you go, you go there's always gonna, gonna, gonna be something you don't like. It yeah. doesn't mean it's a negative. It doesn't mean, mean that you don't like. love being there. It's yeah. just something that you notice that people, you know, who yeah. are abroad and wanting to like come here. Like, for example, here. the lack of variety of food in the Philippines. For me, it's a negative. It doesn't mean I don't love living in the Philippines. Yeah. It just means if they had a big variety of food, it would have made it even better. Yeah. Right? And if they had really great healthcare system, it would have been even better, right? Yeah. If they had great infrastructure and no trash on the roads and stuff like that, it would be even better, right? It would be a, it would be a freaking paradise, right? So, so it's, it's, it's not about like, we don't like the Philippines. Of course we love the Philippines. We love it there also. I mean, I, plan like to, I have home. always planned to retire, not always, but since 2005, the first time I went to the Philippines, I was just in love and I thought to myself, okay, from now on, all I'm going to do is save and save and save. And one day I'll retire. And that's what I did, you know. So here we are. Yeah. What? End of line? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess um, this is the end of our trip to Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, there will be soon upcoming <laughs> because um, you know some of the videos that we'll be uploading will be some of our trips in Malaysia because you know yeah we didn't really upload a lot we didn't, of videos we didn't vlog a lot yeah. because my laptop is a bit older 2018 I'm buying a new one this year but I'm waiting for the MacBook Pro new M4 to come out and the new Intel chip to come out and then I'll make a decision which one I want but but we have a Mac Mini at home, so that's the one we usually do yeah, all the video editing on. Much faster. Which is much, much faster. But like on my laptop, I can't do 4K video. Mm -mm. So most of the stuff I've filmed here is in 1080p, including this. Mm -hmm. So, but once we get back to the Philippines, everything will be back in 4K. So. Yeah. So anyway, I think we'll that's about uh, it. I know we've talked about everything and nothing, but it's, you know, we're both tired. <laughs> it's been a a beautiful three weeks but a long three weeks with a lot of walking a lot of stuff so a lot of things we're ready actually on. to get home just sleep for a couple of days in our beds yeah. <laughs> so with that i think i will uh, say see you on the next one and if you haven't subscribed and you made it all the way to the end which would be amazing <laughs> as much as we have blabbered on uh, please don't forget to subscribe like and if you would share it too I'll see you on the next one. Take care and bye-bye.